I talk about identified swings. You know, this may be a little basic to some of our people, but I can tell you this, it's, it's extremely important. It'll make you so much coin, you won't even be able to believe it because you just simply trade the way we teach, okay? Now I'm gonna ask you here real quick, okay? Look at the, the uh, cyan color only first off, and I want everybody to tell me how many identified swings and what is the trend on this particular chart? Okay, how many identified swings? Not on the green one, just simply on the cyan one. How many identified swings? Anybody? Okay, it's up. Okay, one, six, one, 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 seven. Okay, I'm getting all kinds of answers, seven. Okay, let me show you how you can know for absolute sure, okay? Uh, let's see, the ones that throw me off is when it's in a range and the tops and bottoms are similar, but still higher and low, it confuses me. Okay, that's what I'm here to uh, literally dispel tonight, okay? Let's get rid of, first off, let's get rid of lightning three, just for a moment, okay? All right, now if you look at this chart, and first off, I was to tell you that if you had a thrust, let's say you have a low here and a high here, okay, and you come down and you retrace, say, I don't know, 61% of that. Anyway, that's not a higher low yet, is it? Just with what I've got here. But what makes this a swing is when it takes out this swing right here on an uptrend, right? So in that case, you have a low, you have a high. Do you have a higher low yet? It didn't take out the swing, okay? Do you have a higher low yet here? Because it did take out the swing, right? So isn't this the only one that qualifies for that? And a lot of you got that. I'm glad to see that a lot of you got it because this will make a, an extreme difference in your trading. If you can see this in real time, that is your identified swing right there. That's the only identified swing on this particular movement, okay? Notice that I didn't take this one above here. Now, if this one was to go above here, like so, now you do have two identified swings, okay? Now, technically, you even then have three because it did take out this swing also. See what I mean? Okay, so you, you have one, two, and three. Okay, and when you're getting higher lows like we're doing right here, you know, for instance, you know, this, this is a low right here, right? This is a higher low than that one right there. That is a higher low than that one right there. And that is a higher low than that one right there, right? Okay, so the question would be, then why in the world would you want to short it? Everybody see that? Why, why would you really want to short this until it actually gives you the reason to short it? Okay, now let's look at the lightning three and you tell me how many identified swings. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it back like it was. And I wanna know the same thing. How many identified swings on that chart? On the green. And just on the green alone, what is the trend, up or down? It's up, right? Very good. Most everybody got that. You have a low, you have a high, you have a higher low, you have a higher high, you have a higher low here, but you don't have a higher high, so that is not a swing. That is your swing. That's your identified swing, okay? So, if you were trading this this morning and you drew a line underneath here, Okay, wouldn't that pretty much tell you that unless they take that identified swing out that they're probably still heading up? I mean, could they chop around? You better bet you they can, because they did. I mean, they, they literally just held this area, you know, pretty much the whole time we were in the room. Didn't I tell you though, that uh, gold would really take off? And it took off before we closed the room, but it really took off after we closed the room. Okay, 
and I'm going to show you tonight how you can stay with the trade like that and make very, very serious coin on it too, okay? Because, you know, like I say, you've got to diagnose your chart first. You've got to know how many identified swings are on that chart and where they're at. And until you actually see that in real time, you know, just be very careful trading your, your live money because it, it can make a difference in your account, okay? But you'll notice that all along in here, you were definitely getting higher lows. Now, this isn't a higher low here yet until it takes out this swing, right? Well, once it did that, then that's a higher low. Everybody see that? But low, high, higher low, not a higher high, does not make that an identified swing until it does take out this over here. This is pretty much when this swing became identified is when it took it out. See, otherwise it was just sideways. Everybody see that? So let's see, I often have a problem seeing how a swing has been checked. Can you go into more detail about the checking of a swing? And then, so the cyan swing on the second swing is the mid swing. Uh, yeah, uh, Jack, on your question just a second ago, and also uh, another one coming in. Keep in mind that, you know, you've got to look at every single time on your chart, regardless if it's little bitty moves or if it's bigger moves or whatever, there's still identified swings on every single one of these power meters, okay? But keep in mind that, you know, for instance, if this was like this, notice how that didn't, didn't take out that swing right there? That is not an identified swing. What if, what if the chart looked like this instead? Okay, and then they come up here, and then they come down, do like an ABC, and then do this. You know, then really, where is your identified swing on this one? It's right there. Everybody see that? Because this one never took out the high. This one, now I call this like a, a primary you know, uh, like a ABC, because technically it was even heading down a little bit, right? Because it actually had a high, low, lower high, and lower low. But you've got to look for that when it doesn't take out this previous swing. Let's just pretend that this was more like this even. Let's say that it had done something like this and this. This is all just play because obviously this is not what's real price. This is real price. Okay. But see right here, for instance, let me see if I can lock that. For some reason, it doesn't want to lock. Come on. Okay, that's close enough. See, so you have a low, you have a high, you have a higher low. Do you really? Because it just barely touched that top. See there? So when it takes out that top, that's your identified swing. But it does also identify this one if it takes out the swing that it was trying to identify. So I call this my minor, and this is my secondary. Okay. So by looking at that, you have a low, you have a high, have a higher low, lower high by three ticks. Higher low, higher high. So basically that identifies both these swings, doesn't it? Okay, but keep in mind, if you were trading this, let, let's say that, that you were watching this in real time and you had money in from, let's say, down in here. I don't know where, wherever it might have been, but let's say that you're holding or something like that and this thing comes down on this particular trade, okay? Now, you would have probably been taken out of this anyway, but I'm trying to show you just swings. Uh, and then this was to come down like this. Well, this could easily just hit its head here, come all the way down, test here could even test down to here, you know, which it missed it by a few ticks. And that's what we look for in that room is those higher lows on these little pullbacks. Okay, because you want to see what gold actually did? That's gold. Okay, so gold actually just went literally to the moon. Okay, so if you're looking at this chart now, does everybody see that? You have a low, you have a high, you have a higher low, not a higher high. You do have a higher low once it takes this swing out, but when they're really close to each other like that, I usually like to see them take out the swing to the left. 
And then this identifies both those swings. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, Mindy. Mindy says, I went to the gym after the room closed. I will not do that again. Yeah, and see how gold even came down and tested. You know, remember in the room we even said, anybody that was in the room this morning, do you remember we said it's got to hold 171.40? Remember when it was pulling back with a close of a bar? 170.90, pardon me, was uh, it, we were trying to hold 171.10, and it wicked it down, and it popped it back up. Okay? Now, what I want to show you now is uh, now that you've seen this, let, let's see another chart here. I went ahead and put this on for the fun of it right here. Identified swings. Why are they important, everyone? Because too many people get on the wrong side of the trade, and then they wonder why they're losing money. Because until they decide what they're going to do, you've got to look at those higher lows and higher highs on a uptrend and vice versa on a short. Okay. For instance, if this is my low here, because this one's not established yet, see it hadn't taken out this swing yet, wouldn't this be where I would actually be looking if this was to start breaking down? Right? And did it do that? See, it kept getting higher lows. Okay. So holding for something like this, matter of fact, I was up at like 6.30, so I was in this silly thing from mid-band and, you know, collected some coin, got in again, you know, with a, a few extra down here. Remember when it came down and just perfectly kissed? And, you know, you could box that in, by the way. There was, there was a little box there. I'll show it to you when I go to the re regular chart. Okay. Uh, when you say the mid-swing, Roger, I'm not following what you mean by that. You mean... Uh, You mean like a secondary swing? Because to give an example, like right here, you have a low, you have a high, you have a higher low and a higher high, but then you have a higher low, but not really yet because it never took out the high, right? So what they'll usually do is they'll do an, you know, like an ABC and do something like this, and then you do get those higher. You know, once they start taking these swings out, then this is your new identified swing. Now keep in mind when they do something like they did today, you're not going to put your stop way down here. Everybody knows that, right? This thing went to town on what we consider to be the power meter three, but you're not going to hold that through identified swings like that, okay? Use the term mid-swing mid if they take out, then they would change directions. Well, like at the open, to give an example, well, what you still want to look at, keep in mind, that, you know, when you look at your chart and you see, you know, higher lows and higher highs, if they just barely bit below, you know, a swing and you see another swing that's like within seven ticks, that's up to you if you want to take it. But what if they just make a higher low and then off they go? You know, I like to look personally. Sorry about that. Let me get rid of this. I unplugged it. Sorry about that. I thought Linda got that. All right. Everybody see that, what I'm talking about? Because this type of trading will make a huge, huge difference in, you know, where you can actually make some very, very, very serious coin trading if you just learn to see these in, in real time. Okay? Because the reason that you don't want to be going short, even if it's at mid-band, is you got to look to the left, you know, and, and in this case, for instance, you know, I wouldn't have personally shorted this silly thing until it actually took out 70, 20 and probably kissed it and rolled over. Because what if you shorted, let's just say that this would have been hanging a little bit below the mid band. Wouldn't that still be a higher low than that? So if you shorted it and you had to wait for the bar to close and you had support right here, would that give you any kind of a trade? Probably not. So that higher identified low swing is the secondary swing. That's correct. Everybody see that? How do you identify a higher low has been made for entry before the high is taken out? Well, uh, Steve, on your question there, what we're looking at, though, is this is looking at trend three, okay? But your trade's a little bitty like in here. 
Okay, let me just show you on the chart itself, just one sec. I think I've got it. Uh, no, I don't actually have the chart. Let me just draw one. Get one, get one up here. That was gold. Bear with it a second, it's loading. Okay, let's just go over the chart. Let's say that you got up uh, at, I don't know, 6.30, okay? First off, you gotta look to the left to trade the right, right? So I draw lines on my charts. You know, I see a little line right through there to give an example. We'll change that to midnight blue so it'll look better, okay? So you look at your charts, right? You draw on your charts. It's, it's a must that you gotta draw on your charts, by the way. If you don't draw on your charts, you probably won't be making too much money. Uh, Ed, on your question, well, that's the whole thing, that you want to be on the right side of the trend, right? Now, keep in mind, though, that if you just short, like, below mid-band, you know, there, there's always that possibility that they're going to break just straight down, right? But you've also got to look at where your your next level is. You know where where are they actually going? You know to go. To give an example, let's just say that you don't know what's on the other side of this chart, okay? And I see an identified swing here. You've got a high. You have a low. Uh, you barely closed above that, so I'll give that to the next one at least. I'd say this is even more of a ratchet up. So that's your identified swing, right? That's pretty much what I call your medium identified swing okay so now you've just got to make the decision of how you want to trade this right so what you've got to do is you got to draw on your charts you know i figure if we're going to get a higher low first off we need to draw our line at support we need to draw another level to see if they've checked it okay it looks like they have checked this one but let's see if they've checked this one thrust retrace thrust We'll go to this one next, all right, and see how they just bounced right off of that. So wouldn't that be a good entry if you happen to get up at 630? You know where I drew my line? Notice how it popped right off of it? Went back above mid-band, okay? So wouldn't you think that could be, you know, a pretty decent little trade, right? And that is a higher low, by the way, so far than the other one. Let's see, uh, Dennis says, I draw my charts and look for confluence with Fibonacci swings, which are powerful. Yeah, you're 38, 61.8, 127, and even like 161, et cetera, like your extensions. Yeah, definitely. You know, but a person can also, you know, look at, uh, to give an example, like when this trade was called this morning in the room on gold, you know, it was about 7.59, wasn't it? You know, that's, that's when we kind of opened the, the room. But let's say that you got in here, you know, because it did come down to your line that hadn't been checked yet. So you basically, you're in, right? Now, where would your stop need to be on this particular trade? I'd probably put my stop just a couple of ticks underneath that swing, okay? Because if they're going to go ahead and head up like I think they are, and I'd take some coin. Okay, that's a good little trade, by the way. That's actually an excellent trade. Everybody see that? Because you don't know how high it's going to go. Okay, so let's just say that you get in the trade right here. Okay, you're, you're with the trade. You've got your stop here for your, for your runner. But you also look at lightning. And to me, that's lightning. See it? high, low, lower high. If it takes that out, you could take all but one of your contracts off. Okay. So you took, let's say you took two targets to give an example. And now it looks like you're out of all but one. You're still riding your one with your stop under here. And this was just mind numbing this morning, but it actually did pretty good. Charles came in at 830 and it was still pretty much in the same stinking range. Okay. So you're just riding your runner, right? 
You're riding your runner. Riding your runner. Riding your runner still. Because wasn't, wasn't this just nothing? There, there's our 759, by the way. Everybody remember that? Came right down to support again. Got you another little trade, just the way we teach it on uh, the little box, right? And you're still in this mind-numbing sideways chop. Everybody see that? Now, let, let me ask you a question, though, real quick. Where could you get in these little trades to see if you could scalp them? Anybody? Well, first off, you got in down here, right? Because that was like a, a yellow bar probe in the mid band, and it came right to our support level. Mid band pullbacks, absolutely. So, could you actually purchase here? Try to get ten ticks. Uh, purchase at like a predictor. You know, try to get see how that predictor's bouncing a little bit. Try to get some ticks on that one. You see, there's a good ten tick trade. Everybody see that? That's a little predictor trade. But keep in mind that you still got a runner in. So you could actually still be, you know, uh, taking a contract, trying for 10 ticks. There's $100. There's another $100. See what I mean? Like that. The next one didn't come down to me, Ben, and you're still riding your runner. Everybody see that? Now, by looking at what we consider to be identified swings, could you stay with this trade for the gusto? Because I'm going to throw a little, uh, uh, basically a little bit of a curveball at you. Okay. You're in from way over here. Because like I said, I got up at 630, you know, and this was mind numbing chop. But if you stop, you know, way down here, of course here and then here, right? I just gave you the answer. Sorry about that. Everybody see this is not your identified swing through here because it never took out. You know, in other words, you had a high, had a low. You didn't have a higher high. It never closed. So where is your identified swing on this chart? And it's right there. Everybody see that? Okay. Now, if you're ever going to get some of these 100 tick runs, or 80 tick or 60 or whatever, you, you've got to really decide that you want to stay in a trade for the gusto because they will still do that same thing that they always do. They'll do identified lightning. Let, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll just draw it manually so you can see it. Let's just start from, let's even start from down here. You have a high, you have a low. You don't know this is your low at the time, right? Because it has to close above. So it closed above. So that's your new low, right? Everybody see that? That's your lightning identified swing. Now, this came down. And when it closed above the swing, isn't this your identified swing? Even though it went all the way up like that. Everybody see that? That's your identified swing. Now, do you want to hold that from 74 all the way to 7220? Well, it depends if you want to make $1,000 or not. Because as long as that thing is trekking upward and getting higher lows, yes, you do want to. Now, do you want to stay in five contracts and give them 20 ticks back? No. No. No, because you'll make yourself sick if you hit 74 and you come all the way down to even like 74.90 and come all the way down to 73.70, that's 12 ticks. So if you had five contracts, that's $600 pullback. Okay. But didn't we talk about, you know, adding some like at mid band, stuff like that? Try to get $100. Didn't come to mid band that time. So you really only did it once, twice, maybe even here possibly. But you hadn't gotten your 10 ticks. So you probably just did this one at mid band and this one at mid band. Okay, now what does the market do? What do you think it's going to do? It's going to come down and test support just like that. See the support level right there. Now, if you were of the mindset that you wanted to go ahead and do more than one contract now, that's a good area to do it right there because it came perfectly down to support. You know, it bounced with a bar 
you know, could you actually take that trade? Well, how about just boxing it in? Let's say that, you know, instead you're in one, and now you decide, you know what, I may go ahead and add a couple. Because this is clearly heading up. So you watch it. You get a bar up. You get a bar down. Doesn't that draw your box? Doesn't that actually draw your box right there? That's for sure drawing your box. Not talking about shorting it. Long only. See there? Now, what if you were in an extra two here instead, and now you're writing, well, let's just say you're, you take two extra, and you simply take one or two off up here at the top, because that's what it's trying to do. See there? And as soon as the bar closes down, you could go ahead and take one off. That's probably where I'd take one off. Leave two on, ride it, ride it, ride it, ride it, and ride it. Where's your new identified swing? Everybody see that? Trading this particular way will make just the hugest difference in your trading that you've ever seen. Because when markets move, you know, even when they're going sideways, they're still trending. If you think about it, they're, they're trending one way or the other, aren't they? Because you'll see higher lows or lower highs or maybe even a, a wedge, you know, or something like that with lower highs and higher lows or vice versa. But as a rule, you're still getting ready to set up a trend and that's what you're looking for. So let me ask a question then. If you would have gotten in here with two extra contracts from down here and this went up from 7310 never even took out line six. How much money would that be? That's a thousand dollar bill. That's literally a thousand dollar bill. Uh, where do you look for box again, Bill? That's what I'm talking about right here. See, what you want to do is you want to draw on your charts, okay? Even using lightning until you get used to everything. Notice how when this thrust up above, remember we're talking about lightning swings. Let's just start from here. You have a low, you have a high, you have a higher low, but you don't know it's a higher low yet until it takes out the swing to the left. That's now a higher low right here. Then this is not a higher low until it takes out this swing. So when it comes back to test, don't you think more than likely that they just come right back on top of where that little old support level was? And then you box it. Now, this is actually a little riskier trade than waiting for mid-band, but keep in mind that, you know, when you're looking at, at a trend with higher lows and higher highs, they're not coming all the way down here, so you can get in, like, below mid-band. They're just not doing it because you're getting higher lows and higher highs, so you expect another higher low. Let's see. I can see the identified swing based on what you're teaching, but not sure how to find the area to get in that should test reason they do not often come back to the ID swing. They, they come back to the identified swing a lot, an awful lot. But, you know, for instance, we talk about this line six is a real good, oh, and here's another one, let me show you. Forgot about this one. See how this thrust right here, and then stealth loses it right here? See how that's a blank spot on stealth? How about that entry? Right here, just use stealth. Because stealth, the way we designed this is, let's say that you got in on this stealth, and then you decided to add one on the next stealth. You could do that. Matter of fact, look at that thing. It just went like crazy. Now, that's the first time right there that it's taken out an identified swing. Right there when it took out this. See your little thrust, retrace thrust, didn't close, but then it made higher, you know, you have a high, low, lower high, and it closed on that bar right there. That's the first time that it took out your identified swing. Everybody see that? Now, that's a pretty good place 
to actually protect your coin. Because uh, matter of fact, if you look that over, you'll probably see that more than likely they'll do a little deeper retracement. You want to see? I don't know. I didn't trade after 11, but uh, let's just see if they do. Everybody notice that? Look, look at your identified swings. Let me just draw it real quick. Everybody see that? High, low, lower high, lower low. You know, that was barely identified right there. So even if you put your line right here, they still took it out. Everybody see that? So, you know, when we draw those lines in the room, would we be out of this trade? Very possibly on this bar? You should be. Because what are they doing now? They're going to make deeper retracements and give you another trade. You want to see if we can get one? Watch it and you tell me when it when it breaks lightning. Now, by the way, you could have shorted this too, but we're just going to trade it to long side. All right, everybody see this right here so far? Okay, you have a high, low, lower high, lower low. So that's an identified, uh, see your, Right here, your identified swing to the downside. So I would probably box it in right across here, like so, and see if I could get up at least to here, possibly to here. And if we didn't, then, you know, just protect your coin. Let's see if we can get that. You're in. Good enough right there. Just hit a swing over here to the left, and you put your stop just under the identified swing, just in case they decide to come back. Took out the identified swing. Okay. Do you ever get in at stealth and then average it goes to mid band? If so, where's your stop? Well, Adam, on your question, you definitely can. You know, if you want to. Now, keep in mind that one thing you want to really watch for whenever you get a monster move to begin with, you're going to get these deeper retracements. And, and But you can still scalp after that. You know, just like I showed just then, you know, bouncing off predictor right there, grab you a quick five, six tick trade. You know, see if you can get another one. Let's see if we can get one more. I'd probably take it off that mid band right there. That's a little scalp. That's scalp for sure. Everybody see that? Okay, so that's two trades. One here, one here, right off our predictor. Coming down a little bit deeper. Let's see if we can get a lightning. There's your lightning right there. I haven't gotten it yet. Nope, nothing. Except if you wanted to even short it if you wanted to. But everybody see that? You didn't get another trade to the upside just then. And that's no big deal, right? Now, could you have shorted this? Thrust retrace if it breaks support? That's that identified swing that we talked about earlier that was on this chart. Kind of like that. If they make higher lows like that and then they finally take out your support, yes, you can short those. But keep in mind the best way to trade this, of course, it's way after hours, but you would be looking for a, a retracement right back into this line or into this swing right here, like so. That's where I'd be looking to reshort that. Okay. Does ABC seem to be a pattern that precedes a trend change? Oh, absolutely, Dennis, on your question. Let me show you what Dennis is talking about here. Now keep in mind that when this actually finally broke the identified lightning, you know, if you look at this where you have a high, you have a low, you have a lower high, but they didn't close below the swing, see there? And then they went a little higher and then they broke the identified swing right across here. Could you short that? Yes. But keep in mind that sometimes they just break these little micro swings and then pop them right back up. So if you did short this, like here, 
then just watch it do its little stair stepping down. And the moment it quit doing it, like right there, you take it off the trade. Everybody see that? Which swing do you use for those little swings? Well, you're, you've got different settings of Roger that you can actually set on object trader or pardon me on the indicator. Uh, keep in mind, power meter one, power meter two are basically four range, single like that or double where it has to come back at least double on bars because the way we did the indicator is like this. See, here's your lightning two to give an example is a four range two strength. Okay, so that means you have to have at least two bars up and two bars down to ever form it. So if it was to get four bars up and one bar down and 15 bars up, it would make a straight line. Everybody see that? Where the little one, if you had, you know, four bars up and one bar down and, you know, 15 up again, you would see a little swing. Okay. So that's actually how you do the identified swings on these charts. And if a person can really learn to see those, you know, you can definitely make some serious coin trading. And keep in mind that, you know, when this was heading this direction like this, and it finally did break what we consider to be the identified swing. Now, does everybody see why this is your identified swing here, not this one here? Because that's important, because when you're watching it in real time, okay, watch, watch and see what I'm talking about here. We'll just stretch this out a little bit. Okay, watch a bar at a time. So you have a bar going up. You have a bar going down. You have a wick. Okay, so, so far you have a high, you have a low, you have a lower high, right, than this. But see what they did? If you drew your line right here on your identified swing, they never closed below it. Everybody see that? So what do they do when they don't do that? Well, they take it up a little bit more again. But now, isn't this truly your identified swing now for sure right there? See your thrust, your retrace? and they did break it, okay? Uh, Bill, stealth is uh, even more than that because what it does is it actually also looks at uh, some different things, uh, like where you see this, for instance, where it breaks stealth. Like, for instance, if you miss this trade, like way down here to give an example, that we, we got in this thing quite a bit earlier. I did anyway, at, you know, 6.30 when I got up but it played around for literally hours on end. But we also boxed this in the room too, okay? But what, what you're talking about though is, see, see for instance where this kind of breaks below stealth, you could get in here, you get in here with stealth, you could get in here with stealth, you could get in here, but that wouldn't have worked. You got a red one, so you're out and more than likely, if this is going to head back up tomorrow, you'll probably get a bounce off of predictor or a phantom and more than likely get a green stealth and head back up if they do it. But right now, they're actually short. Okay, let's see. So keep in mind, very important. You have lightning three. Not identified till it takes out the swing, right? So that swing is the only identified swing on this particular chart, right? Right there. Now, how many are there on this one? Well, you took out a swing, so there's one. You took out this swing, so there's two. You took out this swing, so there's three. You took out this swing, so there's four. Everybody see that? That's how you do that. Now over here is a little bit more difficult, right? Because this is your smaller, your lightning one. Is that your identified swing? Yes, it took out the swing. Is that your identified swing? Yes, it took out the swing. Is that your identified swing? Yes, it took out the swing to the left. Is this identified? Yes, took it out. 
is this identified to the downside? Yes, it took out the swing to the downside. See that? So it's doing a high, low, lower, high, lower, low. So could you be out of the trade right there? Yes. And then could you get back in it right here? Yes. That's what we do. Okay. That's the best way to trade that because, you know, as long as it's doing the lightning dance up, you're going to want to stay long. Now, a lot of times I don't pay as much attention to lightning one and I'll let it do a little pullback because I like to get these like this. I mean, don't you love them when they just do that and just keep on trucking? And that's what happens many, many days is just like that. Okay. Now, let's, let's see if I've got any questions on. Notice that we didn't use Object Trader yet tonight or anything. We don't even have to. I just want to let everybody see how to identify what the, the overall trend is and how to get out of these trades at a perfect opportunity. And does everybody see that if you drew on your chart or saw it in your mind that never since let, let's just pretend that you got in down here where we called it because we called this trade right down in here after the market. Remember, we were talking about boxing it in. Okay, so let's say that you got in the trade. All right, or you may have even gotten in here. But do you see that at no time were you actually given a reason to get out of this trade? I mean, it's just stair stepping, stair stepping beautifully. But where did it quit stair-stepping? Just like we drew it just a minute ago. You have a high, you have a low, you have a lower high, finally, and they took it out with a closed bar. Now, rather than shorten that, I personally like to buy it here because this is still an uptrend in my books. Now, over here, it's not so much because it finally hit resistance over here, and it's kind of rolling over, and you could start trading this you know, even in this stuff right here, more like a range. Okay. But, you know, your first trade into mid band is right in through here, right? Because lightning, well, actually your lightning is right there. So you'd be in on that bar. You got a scalp. You got another scalp. Keep in mind that if they don't take out these tops, you have a high, you have a low, you have a lower high, not a lower low. So now you have a high, a low, a lower high and they finally start taking it out. So is this a trend change? Yes. Is it necessarily already finished though? Possibly, because it's still a major, major uptrend so far. Okay. Now, the one thing that I'd like for everybody to take away from this today would be, be very careful. You know, for instance, let's say that, uh, Let's just see. Let, let's just say that, that you short at mid band. Let's, let's just say that, that you had a box like this right here to give an example. Okay. Something like this. And you were thinking, well, this is going to short. Okay. But keep in mind, isn't the trend actually trying to head up? We've got a sideways, you know, and if you get in those like that, if they hit support and they go right back against you, just get out, you know, because if you do a box at the open, you know, you don't have to let them go all the way back up to the swing and take you out, right? No, because, you know, when we draw those boxes in the room, to give an example, first thing in the morning is if it breaks out of that box, you really want it to go ahead and take out this support. Then you want it to take out like this support over here. You want it to take out this support, this support, this support. And if it doesn't do that and it go back in the box, just dump them. Okay. Anybody have uh, questions so far on identified swings? I think really that identified swings, no, no matter if you start deciding that you want to look at the larger ones, the medium ones, or actually uh, lightning two, or even lightning one, you can still see that you can make, you know, some very good coin if you just learn to see these identified swings in real time. Because 
you know, for instance, if, if you box this in, well, I can't box it because it's not a, a chart. This is just a picture. But if you box this in right here, for instance, you wouldn't be shorting it, right? Because your, your support's right down here. So if you, but if you boxed it in, you might be getting out of the trade, right? And then guess what? You could just watch for it to do its little thing and start stair-stepping up again and grab the trade. Thomas P says, I actually learned a lot tonight. So big thanks. Well, you're welcome. Because I'll tell you what, this makes a huge difference in what to do every single day that you're trading. Because, you know, to, to, like I said, to give an example, what, what if you, um, you're one of those, let's see, let's see if we can find an area that just flat didn't work. Here's one. Let's pretend this is, well, this is pretty close to the open. Let's say that you said, you know what? I'm going to short this if it takes this out right here. So it actually does, right? But then all of a sudden, it's right back in your face. Okay, that wasn't a short to begin with, was it? Because our background's green and everything else. Now, this little short probably worked if you boxed it in again, and that's fine. But, you know, what you want to do, if, if you actually shorted, like, let's say, for instance, this was 8.30 in the morning, and you did happen to break out. You, you've heard Charles and I before say, close back inside the box, I'm out. Because let's say that you get in this trade and you don't even get five ticks. Well, if you even close back inside the box, you know, with a couple of contracts, that could still be 80 bucks. Okay, now maybe you made it up over here when it did finally short and got you a 10 ticker. So it made up for that one, right? Okay, so like I say, the one thing you want to want to always watch for is to realize that until lightning identified swings, you know, when, when we're in that room, to give an example, you know, would you have been going long here at the open or short? See your, see your identified swing over here? You know, if you have to go to a black chart, just do it. But see there, that's not a long, is it? So wouldn't you have boxed this in? And we probably did on Monday, didn't we? Because I remember this trade on Monday. We did box this little dude in right here. Everybody remember that? Because that was right at the open and turned out to be a beautiful trade. So keep in mind, you know, you, you've got to kind of see through all the trees, you know, you, you got to see the individual trees, the individual trades, because the forest is there also, and it can get pretty confusing sometimes if you don't see these swings in real time. Because identified swings make a huge difference on keeping you in a trade or getting you out of a trade, like when it's choppy, things like that, okay? Everybody remember yesterday what a monstrous day we had after that thing dropped? Anybody? You want to see how to stay in the trade? Draw your lightning on your chart. Lightning two is good. Does that look like you should get out of that trade yet? Does that look like you should get out of that trade yet? It's wicking it, saying, uh-oh, should we get out of that trade yet? What, what do you think? No, look at that. No, see it just kissing resistance? That's why we draw on these charts all the time. And would you have gotten taken out of a beautiful trade if you had taken it out right there? Everybody see that? And where was your identified swing on this chart? Well, you did have an identified swing here, right? Because you had a low here, a high here, and a lower low with the close of a bar, but it barely closed below it. So usually when they do that, I'll back it up a little bit more just in case. You know, that way they have to close above resistance, okay? But you'll see that when you're actually trading on your charts, you know, and, and you'll see where the, the final swing is that they decide to call their lower high. And then what they do after that. Everybody remember that trade yesterday on gold? We were still open in the room till that point. Anybody remember it? It was a pretty solid trade, wasn't it? And where would you get out of that trade? I'm showing you right where it's at. Everybody see it? You have a low, you have a high, 
have the same low, but then you have a lower high and a lower low. So that's your swing right there, your identified lightning swing. And if I was going to hold this for the gusto, I would probably see this swing right here and say, you know what, I'll at least give them to here, but I'm not giving them any higher than that because that's actually even my ABC and that needs to hold on a pullback. And if it didn't, like so, well, it held there, you're still okay. You're still okay. See how you do that? You're still okay. So then you just simply follow it down, lightning, and just stay with lightning until it gives up the ghost. Okay, let's see. Now, like I said, you notice that we didn't use Object Trader tonight because what I wanted to show you was a little bit more how to see verified real-time lightning. You know, always look to the left to trade the right. You know, if they barely take out a swing, you know, I always look and say, you know what, this is my minor swing, but this is a secondary swing. So look how that one held. You put your stop in there and see how they wicked it and then they rolled over. That's what they do. They've got their algorithms tuned in to seeing these swings. And keep in mind, we're using four range charts to begin with. So when they do these monster moves like this, don't you think you can absolutely stick around with a trade like this until it gives up the ghost? Well, that one closed below that swing right there. See your low, your lower low. Couldn't you take this trade out? Maybe even back it up to here. Resistance, and you're still in, you're still in, you're out. See it right there? Now, does that mean that you're ready for another trade yet? No, not necessarily, because you're gonna do the same thing on the, on the flip side. We wanna at least get a rollover at or around mid-band, right? And a predictor is preferable. So let's see if we can get another trade, just for the fun of it. Okay, let's see, you have a high, low, lower high, lower low. So that's actually what I consider to be your secondary swing on the left. You got taken out of the trade. So I would be looking for at least a pullback into here. See if we can get it. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Not even at predictor yet, is it? So I'm not taking that trade yet. There's a little higher predictor. There we go. We got into a predictor. Now, let's, let's use our same thing that I've been teaching all night. Okay, you want to see if we can get in this trade? And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. A bar up, a bar down, right? A bar up, there's your little box. See your high, your low. So if you boxed it like so, Still looking for shorts, so let's see if it works. You're basically in it now because it even went below this one. But anyway, let's just say it's there. Let's hear instead. Okay, so you're in. And you got your little trade. There's a scalp at least, or more than a scalp, right? Okay. Now, this is starting to get higher lows. Look at this, low. High, higher low, higher high. So now what's the trend? Anybody? Looking at lightning just the way we teach it, what's the trend? Anybody? It's starting to go up, isn't it? So what are we going to do then? Well, we're going to basically watch for a mid-band type trade, don't you think? You want to see if we can get one? Okay, I would probably be in when that touched that mid band, but let's put our stop right here just in case I'm wrong. Got a little scalp. You could take it out right at mid band. This looks like it's going to be a little bit choppy for a bit, but everybody see that where you could get in that trade and still do pretty decently. Let's see if we can stay in it. Yep, higher low. There's where I'd be taking it out probably because that's, if it double tops there, if it goes ahead and goes through it, we'll stay with it. 
Okay. There's a little double top so far. You can box it in. Keep in mind that without a high, low, lower high, you can be taken out of a good trade that could continue up. But I would probably still go ahead and put my stop just underneath here simply because if it does pull back, I don't really want it pulling back a lot because it looks like we're scalping. So let's see if, it, if we stay in that one or not. Still in. Don't like that. Actually would stop you out, I would think. But since you got a wick now, you'd probably at least go with your wick. So let's see. Yep, out. Everybody see that? That is a high, a low, a lower high, and a lower low. So it took you out. Okay, and let's see if you can do it again. That's support. Okay, that's a little bar right there, right? So let's just box it in, see if we can get another trade. Still okay, 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 and so on. See, see how to do that? Okay, so what we did on this is what? We diagnosed it, and even before that trend changed to a green background and everything, guess what? We already knew it was happening, didn't we? And how did we know it was happening? The same way we teach in our room all the time. We were looking for lightning to start changing directions. Is this a low? Is this a high? Is this a lower low? Uh, pardon me, a higher low. And so when they start taking this out, isn't this where that was changing trends? So when they come down to support, could you box it and get, look at that trade, decent, okay? Not too shabby of a way to trade. Now, what about this though? Look at this, a high, a low, a lower high. So is this gonna do maybe a break here? Let's find out. It broke. I'd probably myself be looking for a little thrust down and a little retrace right into that resistance right there. If that rolls over, I'd short it. That's short. There you go. Let's see, which lightnings are best for beginners to put on the chart, Robert, Rob, Roger says. Well, Roger, what I would do even is look at several charts and try to draw them in your mind first. Lightning two is a little bit more forgiving than lightning one. Lightning one, let me just show you real quick. Lightning one, let's see if I draw it just right from here. See, that's basically lightning one. So you have a high, you have a low. You have a lower high, but it didn't take out the swing. A little higher, it finally took out the swing. So that's your identified swing, right? See how they come back and kissed it? So then you have a high, low, lower high, lower low. So guess what? You got another identified swing right there. Then they thrust down, they retrace, they break again. So you got another identified swing right there. They thrust down, they retrace, they pull back, you get a higher low, you get a higher high, you got stopped out of your short. Okay, now that's with lightning one. Okay, now keep in mind in, in the morning when we're first trading where these things run like a big dog, you wanna try to get these kind of moves. Okay, like remember when yesterday we called this trade on gold in the room? where a lot of our people took this, and some of them even took it at mid-band. When it broke mid-band and got that monster move, some of them took it here at resistance, which was this predictor. And if they missed it after that, they pretty much missed a heck of a move. But the whole thing that you wanna do is you want to make sure that you're looking at truly identified swings, okay? Like to give an example, let's say that you were in this trade way back over here. Draw your lightning two to give an example and watch this. See there? Now, is there any reason to get out of this trade? See how it just barely wicked that area there and it really never identified it. And then you get those monster moves after that. That's what you wanna watch for. You don't wanna get taken out of trades, you know, 
unless you're a real tight stopper, to give an example, you have a low here, a high, higher low, and it finally closes above the swing. Well, if you do get out, then get back in when it goes up to this predictor and, you know, draw you a trend line or something like that even, you know, like so, get in, okay? But this is the way you can get some of these really, really monster moves. And also keep in mind that, if you want to bring it back, you know, to like, for instance, if this barely took out this swing, this is your identified swing and see, they tested it, but they never really tested this one. Now, if you got in clear up here, that's still okay to ride with that one contract because you're trying to get these monster thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace. Okay. And to me, when this barely takes out this with lightning one, to give an example, or lightning two even, pardon me. Let me turn this off for a second. We're almost through. Yeah, where did that, here it is, okay. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See how this had a thrust and a retrace and barely closed below that swing and that bar even went right back up? That's usually a telltale sign that this swing will not hold or they're gonna at least wick it. Everybody see that? So you can even bring it up to like a little, you know, maybe this swing. You don't have to go all the way up to here, but maybe, you know, bring it back one more set of little uh, consolidation candles. See where you have a high, low, lower, high, you know, maybe right through here even. Don't let them take you out so easily. Because the one thing that they'll do is they'll take you out easily and then they'll give you those monster runs. Remember, in gold this morning where I said that was going to run and also said oil was going to run, they did. And and a bunch of you got it. Remember, we got in oil at what, 87, wasn't it? Wasn't it 87? Okay. So, Roger, on your question, just, just learn really to see them. Even if you don't draw them in, you know, just, just kind of do in your mind like this. You know, you can you can clearly see that you've got like this little move like that for instance and then you just draw it again and see then you've got another one and then another one and I won't go through all of them but see how that's still heading down so far even that swing held you know just keep bringing your stop with your uh, secondary swing a lot of times will be a really good area see because it took it out right there okay all right. Thanks everyone for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. We didn't get to use Optic Trader tonight, but that's no big deal. I wanted to show you how to see identified swings. Keep in mind there are three trends at least on your charts, and there's actually four. But if you'll learn to see that one, that one, and that one, it'll make a world of difference in your trading. Okay. That way you're not shorting against trends that are getting ready to go up 20 ticks on you. You know, st stick, stick with the trend. And uh, you'll find that in that room, we do that pretty well. Now there's times we'll go against the trend because we're actually looking for some of these, you know, really quick moves right out of the gate. And some of them will bite you too. So, you know, sticking with the trend is a pretty good way to do it. You'll notice even a lot of times, Charles won't even take one, you know, straight out of a box yet. He'll wait for that retracement. Sometimes you regret it because they'll, they'll thrust and they'll just keep on thrusting. But you could still get in them if you just even watch stealth. To give an example, if you had missed this trade uh, here, way up here, could you have gotten in on that stealth, that stealth, this stealth, or this stealth? Yes. Or this stealth. Everybody see that? So there's, there's good ways to get in the trades even after they start dropping, uh, if you get a retrace. Okay, thanks everyone for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, this was recorded. And Steve says he's starting to see those smaller swings. Yeah, you got to be able to see the smaller ones too. But keep in mind that, you know, you want to really watch for the overall trend and see what's really going on in real time. And we'll draw on these charts every day like this. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one, and we'll see you in the morning. Good night.